Hello, this video continues my series on the very broad class of options that are called exotic options. You may recall exotic options are options that have features that are not standard. So these are any options that are as opposed to what we call vanilla stock options. Here I'm illustrating Asian options. Asian options are path dependent. So they're in this subclass of exotic options that we say are path dependent meaning their value at maturity the option does depend on the particular path that the asset takes over the life of the option, not just on the final or terminal value of the asset. So I'm going to show you both the average price and the average strike variation of the Asian option. So broadly, there's two types, average price and average strike. And this spreadsheet, this workbook actually does contain the calculations that you can use to value the average price Asian option. Let's look at the payoffs for Asian options. And to do that, I compare them to the payoffs for standard options, which we sometimes call vanilla options. So that's in the first row here. That's the payoff for a call, standard call option, and the payoff for a standard put option. These should be familiar. In the case of a standard call option, it's the final stock price or asset price. I'm gonna just call these, I'm gonna just assume we're talking about stocks as the instance of an asset class. So this is the final stock price, S sub T, minus the strike price, also called the exercise price. I'm denoting with a K, could also denote that with an X. And so we wanna wrap that also in a max function with zero, just to be mindful of the fact here that this payoff, which the, the payoff is the intrinsic value at maturity, is necessarily non-negative. It cannot be negative. So if this difference, if this difference is, zero, is negative, the max function kicks in and sets the payoff to zero. Similarly for the put. Okay, so that's for the standard options. Now the Asian options have, or the Asian option has two basic flavors, average price or average strike. You can see here in the case of an average price Asian option, what we're doing is replacing the final asset price with the average asset price during the life of the option. If that makes you think of two, at least two follow-up questions, that's good, right? Anytime we speak, say average, we probably wanna be more specific. So we do need to be more specific about what we mean by average, how frequently are we observing to determine the average, questions like that. Okay, for the put, similarly, we're taking the final stock price and replacing it with the average stock price. Now, the other major version here or flavor is an average strike Asian option. And you can see the difference here. In this case, for the average strike call, we're taking, we're still, we are using the final stock price, but we're subtracting the average stock price during the life of the option as effectively the strike price. So this average strike Asian option actually doesn't have a fixed strike price. It's using the average price during the life of the option. And in the case of the put, similarly here, it's the average price during the life of the option minus the final stock price. Okay, so three quick points here about the Asian option. And the first is that is really important. That means it belongs to the class of path dependent options. And that means that we get to maturity of the option when it can be exercised and for let's just say that's a hundred dollars it actually matters the path that we took to get there because we're going to be averaging we can get to the same hundred dollar final value through but if we get there with different paths then the asian option will have different values so first thing it's path dependent second thing this may be counterintuitive is is that its value relative to its the standard option, everything else being equal, will generally be less than. Why is that? Well, this averaging tends to reduce the volatility of the underlying asset price. Lower volatility equals lower value. As a general rule then, and I'll show you this on my pricing, 
the Asian options have a lower price. So that's interesting. Third final point, I've showed you the two major versions here of an Asian option, that is say average price, average strike, and you can see they exist for the call and the put, and that's four for mutations. Well, because we need to be specific about the average type, there's actually eight versions of the Asian option. So we could duplicate this because there are two basic ways to take the average of the stock price during the life of the option. We can take an arithmetic average, which is probably what most of us would tend to do. It's more natural. However, that makes it computationally more difficult to price the Asian option. Or we could take the geometric average, which makes it easier. And so, of course, that's the version of the valuation model that is in this worksheet that I'm using now. I, I built that model based when, uh, based in Excel. It's in one of the worksheets here. Didn't, use, didn't need to use any macros. And you can uh, pull that sheet down if you like. Okay, so let's look at the simulations. My simulator here starts at $50 at the beginning of the year. So that's at the time that we would purchase the option. And then you'll notice on the x-axis, I have it going out 25. That's because I'm simulating one year. So that means it's a option initially here at the beginning with a one year maturity, uh, assuming 250 trading days. And I have 25 periods here, 250 divided by 25 is 10 days. So each of my units here on the x-axis is a 10-day period. That's just the way I decided to do it. And that's so you can see here on the green uh, line, each of these dots is one observation. I have 25 observations per year. That means they are semi-monthly or every two weeks. And then you can see I have a little button here that allows me to rerun this. And I also showing here the assumption of this this uh, horizontal line at 50 is just reflects my assumption of a strike price of $50. And then here what I have in the dot, uh, dashed dark dark meant to be dark orange line is the average of the path, right? So this is the key feature, the path dependency of this Asian option. And I have here, I'm illustrating an average price call. So that first instance here, and then I ex explicate here some of the values. My strike price is $50. That's going to be consistent throughout. So I'm comparing this here to a standard at the money one year option where the stock and strike price equal $50 at purchase and the value of that under just plain vanilla Black Scholes Merton happens to be $10.16. If we just purchased a regular one-year option, I have a, a assumption here also of 40% volatility. It would cost us $10. And then, so my orange dashed line here represents the average of my path, which is the average of these 25 observations. And it happens to be, in this case, 46.16. And then my final price here, which is relevant to one of these Asian options, but also re relevant to... Um, any of the vanilla options is 42.52. So you can see in this path, my average is a little bit higher than my final. And then what I also expl explicate here in this first row, again, the price or value of a vanilla European one-year call option with my 40% volatility assumption. All of these again are in the model in the uh, workbook. And then here is that payoff for that vanilla one-year European option. I'm using that small c, denotes European. The payoff here because uh, the final price is $42 or less than the 50. It's underwater. Payoff is zero. Here is the second row. The price, first of all, of my average price call, my Asian option, specifically the average price call, is $5.62. Remember I said that the value of these Asian ops are generally less. In this case, in these assumptions, it happens to be almost half. Quite a bit cheaper to buy this Asian option. Although the average here in the final case ends up being below the strike price of $50. So my average price call doesn't pay off either. And just if you need to remember, if I need to remind you of the formula for that average price call 
right? Instead of the final price, we're taking the average and subtracting the strike price, which is $50 in this case. So I'm using the average 46.16, but it's still below water. Okay, let's run it again, see if I can get one that's different. And let's, let me see if I can get one that's above water. Well, there's my Europeans above water, but my average is not. How about this one? Here we go. It's not a bad example. This one got some significant volatility. Notice um, my initial prices don't change because my assumptions ex ante have not changed. And my vanilla European call option here, where the final price is 37.13, has a zero payoff as expected. It's below the $50 strike price, but my average of this path based on the averaging of these 25 values is 5409. That's the value we use for the average price call, $4.09. This Asian option has, I'm, I'm sorry, 5409 is the average minus the $50 strike. This, a, as this average price call does have a payoff of $4.09. So we can get all sorts of interesting um, outcomes like that. And I will just make a quick point. I, I'm averaging 25 observations, right? That's semi-monthly. If we go back and decide to price this Asian option, this average price called the beginning, but let's say we price, we're going to observe the price once per week instead of once every two weeks. So we're doubling the number of options to roughly 50 or 50 per year. We're making more frequent observations. What do you think that would do to the price of this average price call? Well, again, maybe counterintuitively, it's going to lower the value. The more frequently we make the observations, the lower the price because that contributes that same tendency to make this asset price less volatile, or at least in terms of our measurement of it. Okay, so I do have four tab uh, sheets in this workbook, which... Um, simulate each of those examples. I just did an average price call. This is an average price put, and I'll rerun it again. I'm getting a little blocked out there in my average price put, and I'll just remind that the payoff here of the average price put is the maximum of zero, and the strike price minus, instead of the final stock price, it's the average. Okay, but I'm, and Let's see if I can get a better example. Well, so here's an interesting example. In this case, my final, whoops, my final is 37.44. The payoff of that vanilla put is 12.56, right? That's the that's the amount that it's below $50, but my average was higher, 41.12. So the payoff of my average price put is less. It's only $8.88. So this sort of illustrates a good example of why the price or value of this average price put or Asian put at the beginning is going to be less. You can see here, it would be cheaper to buy an average price put at $3.28 than it would be the corresponding Vanilla European put would be 540. And this sort of illustrates a good example. That average makes it harder to end up with uh, an intrinsic value that's, uh, that's much greater. And then what I, the final two sheets I have in here, I didn't um, go to the time to uh, put the valuation uh, uh, into the workbook. So I just have payoffs here. But here we have an average strike call. So that's in contrast to the what I've showed you previously, which was an average price call. Here, my average strike call, and just to remind you of the payoff, it's max here, zero. And for an average strike call, then we do use the final stock price, but instead of subtracting the strike price, we're subtracting the average during the path. So the average strike call has no fixed strike price, really. And so you can see here, let me see if I get a good example. Run it again and again. And okay, well, this isn't bad. Here, 
My final stock price is $60.70, so that the payoff on a vanilla would be $10.70, the amount that it's above 50. But an average strike call, on the other hand, would be lower, only 450, because the average of this path was uh, 56.21. Right, that's because we're using the final, the 60.70, we're subtracting the 56.21 instead of the 50. So that average price effectively becomes the ex post strike price. And then finally, my average price put. Sorry, my average strike put here, where the payoff is the max of zero. And we use the average minus the final. So we use the average instead of the strike price. And you can see in this example where the final stock price is $24.69, the payoff on my average strike put would be this $38.05 as the average strike price minus the final price of $24.69, and that equals my $13.36, quite a bit less than the payoff on a vanilla European put, which would uh, which uses $50 as the strike price. So uh, really, uh, roughly, very roughly, only half the payoff of a European put. And so those are the four variations. I'll take it back to the, uh, I have the uh, valuation worksheet there. And I've showed you then the average price and the average strike as both versions of the Asian option, which is a really important in example of a path dependent option. If this video was helpful, please subscribe to the channel and we'll make sure that you get updates. Thank you.